Okay, good morning class. So in preparation for your upcoming exam, we're going to do the March 2020's uh, control test. Uh, it was for two hours and it was uh, worth 100 marks. Okay. So we are told that in the diagram below, we have circle center O passing through the points A, B, C, and D. We are also told that AB is parallel to DC. And BOC is 110 degrees, the circle, the, sorry, the chord AC and BD intersect at E, which is this point here. And we are also told that OC, OB, uh, OC, EO, BC are joined. First question, calculate the size of the following angles, giving reasons for your, hand, for your um, answers. Okay, let's put this here. So first they want you to calculate angle D. All right, so angle D is the same as angle A. Okay, but that's not going to help us. However, uh, angle D is subtended by chord CB. But CB also subtends an angle at the center. Not so. So what do we say? So angle D, so this is 1.1.1. 1 .1 .1. Angle D is equal to 55 degrees. Why? Angle at center is equal to 2 times angle at circumference. Okay, so I put 55 in here. Okay. Are you all okay with that? Yes, Alright, let's go to the next one. Who's following the memo for us, just in case we make a mistake? But you guys have done the paper, so you can just let me know if, I, if I'm going wrong somewhere or whatever. Okay. So, uh, one point. 1.2, they want you to calculate the size of angle A. Uh, did he tell you what A is, no? A is the same as D. Not so why? Because our arc CB is obtaining an angle at circumference, which is D and A. So we said that angle A is equal to 55 degrees Y. Angle in, no, it's semicircle. Angle in, same segment. It's coming, and it's coming from arc. BC. Or we could have said angle at center is twice angle at circumference again. Not so. So that is 55 degrees. Then they want you to calculate E2. E2, which is this angle here. scan of a copy is uh, what's bad, no? But anyway, B1, 1.1.3, B1 is going to be 55 degrees. Why? So alternate angles with AB being parallel to D, what is this? C. C. The 55. Here. So E1 is a, um, exterior angle of triangle equals the interior some of the interior opposite. Not so? So then uh, so E2 is going to give you 110 degrees because um, exterior angle of triangle dot 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 and is the exterior angle of triangle AB. You guys understand? So I'm going to take off and this is the information. Okay, I'm taking it off because I want to keep the diagram in focus, okay? So it's 110 degrees now, and this was 55. Right. I have to put better lines in. Okay, thank you to that one. Right, then in question 1.2, we are asked to prove that uh, B E O C B E O C B E O C is a cyclic chord. 
So there, there are four ways to prove cyclic, three ways, sorry, to prove cyclic width. The converse of angles in the same segment, the converse of opposite angles of the cyclic width, or the bow tie, not so. Sorry? Did I say one twice now? Exterior angle of cyclic one equals the interior opposite, the converse thereof. Um, the angles in the same segment, the converse thereof. And opposite angles of the cyclic one supplement, the converse thereof. Okay. But what we can see here is that that is the bow tie, not so. So we say 1.2 since, we're stating the obvious, since O1 is equal to E2 which is equal to 110 degrees. Therefore, BOC, BEOC, BEOC is, is a cyclic quad. Why? You can write converse of, <coughs> converse of um, angles in the same segment, or you write equal angles subtended by same chord. The same arc. Okay. And there we go. That's for two marks. Alright, let's go to the next question. Question two. That is a proof. This proof was tested in your first cycle test, not so. Yes. However, this proof, uh, you will be uh, you'll find the link to this proof in the description box below. Okay? Question 2.2. In triangle KLM, we are told that NP is parallel to RM. So if that is the case, KP is pa uh, KP, oh sorry, MP. So NP is parallel to RM, then KP over PM is equal to KN over R and many other things from but um, just keep that in mind. Then we told that KP is equal to uh, KP over PM is the same as KP over PM is equal to a uh half, -huh, which is um, KP, so that is going to be 1K. And the PM is of course will be 2 k Don't forget to introduce your variables. Okay? KR or MR. MR. Yes, M. R plus then. Over. Or L. What is this is? It's not M. This is KR. Sorry, man. KR over RL. Right? It's going to be 3 A's to 4. Okay, that's why it didn't make sense to me. Okay, again, the, the diagram is very. Uh, the, 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 the copy is very bad. Okay. But anyway, we work a lot better. Right? The question says calculate the ratio of N R over Z R K. Huh? Yes, okay. So 2.1.1. 2.2.1. In R. So in R is this here. Over R K. Which is this whole end here. Okay. So in R over RK is the same as PM over K. You all agree with that? Huh? Yes, sir. Right. So we see that in R over RK in R over RK is equal to PM over KM. Why? Because of the proportionality theorem with um, 
in R in P being parallel to R. Okay. But PM we know is going to be 2K over KM which is 3K so it's going to be 2 over 3 2 is to 3 Okay? Is that right? Huh? It is right. Okay, so if if we work with what we have here, it's going to be 2 and this 3. So RK is 3. So in other words, the same as 3A, that's going to be the same as 2A. Then of course, NK is going to just be A. Okay. You didn't have to write it in at this point. But I'm sure we're going to use it later. Okay. Why people don't sound so convincing? Eh? Don't sound so convincing. Right, the next one. Question 2.2.2. .2 the question is calculate the ratio of LS over SP. LS over SP. But we know that LS over SP is the same as L S over SP is the same as L R over R N. Why? Because of the proportionality theorem. Well, R is being parallel to N P. So L R L R is four A over R N which is 2a. So that's going to give you an answer of 2. Okay, is that correct? Right, so that is 2. So in other words, this is 2 over 1, not so. So in the other words, this will be 2b and 1b. Okay. The reason why I write it in this, there might be a area question or something that follows this. Okay. Lo and, lo and behold, there's the area question. Okay. So all of this information is on the diagram. I'm just going to take it off again. Let's go to purple. 2.2.3. We are now to determine the area. So make this bigger. Maybe we can see it better. It says determine the area of triangle L in P. Or is that K? But Peter? So it's going to be the area of triangle L KP. No? Huh? L KP. So is that a triangle over the triangle L K M, which is a big triangle. Not so. So what are they sharing? They are sharing angle K. Okay. So I'm going to use the sign rule here. Okay. And then we've got times the area of triangle. It will actually have a common height, isn't it? How many marks? There's four marks. We will take this diagram. Eh? This here. We will take this diagram and I rotate it. Well, okay, share common height. Is that correct? Sorry? Or M. See, we are M. How do you mean they're both sharing volume? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, if, if I look at this diagram and I rotate it, let me just show you what I'm talking about. 
I'm just thinking of the easiest way out. We go with this triangle, no? that is the one triangle, and uh, this is the other. Okay. Now take that diagram and turn it like that. Okay. What I should be sharing is a common height here. So I predict that. Can you see that? And if that is the case, it's going to be much easier to do the calculation. Okay? So this is see what other uh, diagram they look at, what other triangle they look at. It's RML. So R M L. That is one over M R K. M Okay. They again they're sharing a common height. Can you see that people? So if you if it's sharing a common height, if two triangles are sharing a common height, and here we've got A, B, C, D, if that is the case, then the area of triangle A C B A C D over the area of triangle A B C would simply be C D over B C. That is why I was interested in if there is a common height. Can you see that? This is my half of base times height. So if I half, what's my base? BC and the other base is my CD. And the height is a common height which cancels me. So the half cancel and the height cancel. That is why I'm saying it's CB, uh, uh, CD over BC. Okay, so let's go back to what we have. What we asked to calculate. So yes, that is common height in both cases. Okay, so let's go with the first triangle. Okay, just write the second triangle. So um, they should down. So R M L R um, M L and uh, okay, it's going to be that. There's going to be a perpendicular and um, M R K M R K. So it's going to be four uh, A over R, uh, R, uh, R K which is 3A. Alright. Then the other one that I was talking about, the other triangle. The other triangle of course is going to be um, LKP LKP So it's going to be but I'm going to go from this point, that being my perpendicular height. So it's going to be KP, which is K, over LKM. LKM, which is this whole end here, which is 3K. So of course the K is cancelled, so it's going to be a third times the A is cancelled, which is 4 over 9. Is that correct? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. Yes? No, you don't have to. No. Right. You're still going to get a full, full four marks, these. Okay. So let's go to the next question. Yes? Can you explain the equation to the center? Okay. Um, you see what, what I look for here, if it comes to the area of, uh, of a triangle, there's two, one of two things I look for. Okay, I'll just show you. If you are sharing an angle, so you're sharing this angle. So you got P Q R S T. And you're sharing this angle there. And you want the area of triangle P Q R P Q S sorry over the area of triangle P R T. Now could I use a common height here? No, I can't. Why? Because we have a common angle. Can you see that? So how do you calculate the area of a non-right angle triangle? If we are given two sides and include an angle. So sign uh, the area which is half PQ times PS. Sine of angle P over a half times um, 
PR, now we must work in the big triangle. PR times PT sine of angle P. And of course you must can cancel that, that cancel, and then you take the lens that you have in terms of KD. You understand? So that is the one case. The other one, however, if you are given a diagram looking like this, and that is PM, that is PMNO, if that's the case. And they want the area of triangle PMN over the area of triangle PNO, which is this triangle over that triangle, the area. But what do you notice here? What is common here? The height is common. Can you see that? That is why the height is common. So the area is going to be a half PMN, uh, the half base, which is MN, times the perpendicular height, which I just drew, drew in there. Over a half times NO times your perpendicular height. That cancels, which now gives me M in over N. Okay, and then you just take the ratios that you have there. So here we add a common height. Now coming back to your question, your question says that this question is talking about that triangle here, which is L K P. Can you see the big triangle? No? No, the, 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 of the two is the smaller one. I'm thinking now I can get that. Okay, but it's going to be LKP, that triangle, over LKM, which is a big triangle. So if you look at those two triangles, what do we have in common? We don't have common. We do have a common angle K here. Can you see that? But if I look at the, the other way around, and as I, I uh, rotated the diagram, I saw that I can actually draw a perpendicular height here. And as you, as you saw when I did the explanation of the first one, knowing the perpendicular height to go in that route is much easier. Not so? So if you had applied the first method here, you would have gotten the same ones. You understand? Right, let's carry on to the next question. In question 2.3, we are told that in the sketch below, P, Q, R, and S are points on the semicircle. So if this is a semicircle, what do we know? R is 90, yes. What else do we know? Q is 90, yes. And so on and so on. Eh? A semicircle. VT is perpendicular to the diameter. VT is perpendicular to the diameter. Okay? Here we can already see without looking at anything else. There's already a cyclic quad being formed. Can you see that, people? Then we are told that P, T, S is A with the emitter. Okay? Prove that. So if we're going to go prove a similarity or congruency question, how do we start? We start by saying in triangle P, R, S and triangle P, T, V. So here we go. R, P, R, S and PTV. PTV. What can we say? We are telling this afternoon to uh, listen. Just take your name here. Yeah? Write the date there. Take your name. If you're not attending, don't make a cross or anything. No? Right. For the two triangles, what do we write? Angle? P2 is a common angle, not so? We can also prove that. T1 is equal to angle R which is 90 degrees and then of course V2 is equal to the angle S1 and 2. Not so? Right, so we need to write that down first. Right, so we start with by saying in triangle, in triangle um, PRS and triangle PTV. We see that angle P2 is a common angle. This is in both triangles. 
Then we say that T1, well, firstly, that's 1, R is going to be 90 degrees. Why? Angle in semicircle. So I put 90 there. Also make it a habit of only putting it on the diagram once you have stated with reason. Okay? And then, T1 is 90, why? And, uh, um, 90 angles on the straight line. Or you can say it was perpendicular. So therefore, therefore, angle R is equal to angle T1, which is equal to 90 degrees. And then the third angle is V2 is equal to um, R is P. Okay, why? So it's the third angle of triangle. So therefore, triangle PRS is similar to triangle PT with Y angle and Okay. Definitely you will get a distance question following this. Okay. Here we go, the distance question. First one is worth two marks. We are asked to show that PT times T. Alright, so let's go with what we have. This is 2.3.2. We must say that PR over PT is equal to RS over TV is equal to PS over PV. Is the is the is the what's name in the right order? P T yes it's correct. Okay. And what's the reason here? Sides in proportion. Okay. So what do they want? They want PT, they want R is T V. Right, so they, that's what they want. So we cross multiply. So what we have, PT times RS is equal to TV times PR. Okay. You guys understand? Then the last question in 2.3.3 is prove that that is the case. Okay. So if I look at what I have, uh, PR TV, so that is that, over PT, over PT. So in other words, I need to find out what R, where does R is fit in this whole story. Can you see that, people? I see what I have and what I just proved, what is required and what I just proved. Okay? So if you're looking at this R is, this R is, what else is that one? PS. PS is this here. What else is that one? PR. So what do we notice? What do we have here? It's a right angle triangle. When do we use squares in right angle triangles? Pythagoras. So what can I say? PS squared is equal to RS squared plus PR squared. The reason? Pythagoras. With angle R equals 90 degrees. If you're going to leave this out, you're going to lose a mark. Okay. Actually, it's just the spot. You need to say which angle is 90. If you leave that out, you're going to lose the mark. If you only write Pythagoras, you lose the mark. Okay. The main thing to write there is angle R is 90. Okay. But what do you notice? Um, it is PS minus PR. So I'm going to take that over the equal sign. So R is squared is equal to uh, PS uh, squared minus PR squared. And you see I'm halfway there. Okay, but uh, I just showed you now how that gets linked here. So I say that firstly, R is is equal to, I divide both sides by PT. So R is is equal to TV times PR over PT. But remember, here's a square here, people, not so. So if I square both sides, and all of that will get the square. And that's what they want. Can you see that? And I can just conclude. Therefore, therefore, um, TV squared 
times PR squared over PT squared is equal to PS squared minus PR squared. Okay, that's worth five marks. Okay, people, this is not going to come to you as a revelation in the exam. Okay, you must practice this stuff. Alright, let's carry on with our lives. Maybe there's better days. People, there's another proof. The proof of the sum of geometric formula. You'll find that in the description box below as well. Okay, it's worth four marks. 3.2. Another thing is with regards to your upcoming exam, it's the same setup. You've got your geometry and you do three first, and then followed by sequence and series. If you feel that you want to do sequence and series first, you do it first. Okay? However, in the answer book, you will see the, the reason why I put that first with the answer book I want to be in front. And the paper you're writing on is just take over to the back. The answer, the answer book that will be given for question, the first four questions. Okay? Which is dealing with trigonometry and geometry. Again, if you're writing on the diagram, write on the diagram in your answer book, please. Okay? It makes uh, more sense, so sometimes you get marks for, for uh, what's on your diagram. Okay, not all the time, it depends. Okay. The second term of geometric sequence is 128. So what is this, people? T2. And the fifth term of the sequence is 2, T5. Determine the nth term of the sequence. So in order to calculate Ta, what do I need? I need A and I need R. Not so. So uh, Tn is equal to ARN minus 1. So T5 is what? AR, 4 is equal to 2 over T2, which is AR, is going to be 128. Okay, so we drop this. A is cancelled, so R cube is equal to 1 over 64. You all agree with that? Cube root of 64, it's 1 over. You all agree with that, people? So what do I do with that? I sub that into any one of the previous equations. I'm going to sub it in there. So AR, which is a quarter, equals 128. Divide both sides by quarter, is 512. Is that correct? Huh? So what's the. So therefore, TN is equal to 512 into R, which is a quarter, N minus 1. You can cancel it if you like, but uh, at that point, you're going to get the full marks already, okay? <coughs> then the, question, the next question says, calculate the sum uh, to infinity. What do I need for the sum to infinity? What is the formula for the sum to infinity? A over 1 minus R. What's your A value? 5, 1, 2 over 1 over? 1 minus 1 over 2, which gives you an answer of something over 3. Sorry? 2048. 2, 4, 2048 over 3. 2048 over 3. Or you can write it in its decimal equivalent or mixed fractions or whatever. Okay. Next, question three. It says consider the first three terms of the arithmetic series. We've got 2t minus 4, t minus 3, 8 minus 2t. The last term of the sequence is 7, negative 70. So that is uh, t. Calculate the value of t. People, if you've got the first three terms of an arithmetic progression in this form, what is exclusive to arithmetic progressions? It has a first common difference. What is exclusive to? Quadratic number patterns. Second common difference. What's exclusive to um, geometric? There's a co common ratio. Okay. So since this is arithmetic, it has to be in the difference, which is T2 minus T1 equals T3 minus T2. Or T2 minus uh, T3 minus T2 is equal to T2 minus T1. So it's 8 minus 2t minus t minus 3 equals t minus 3 minus 2t minus 
Okay, remember that is term one, term two, term three. Okay. Then it is eight minus two t minus t plus three is equal to t minus three minus two t plus four. So I'm going to just add like terms first. So that's going to be minus three t plus eleven is equal to minus t plus one. Okay. So t is one side, numbers the other side. So negative 2t is equal to negative 10. t is then equal to? Five. Is that correct? Alright, so we got t to be 5. In 3.3.2, in 3.3.2, write the series in sigma notation. Sigma notation. So remember sigma? Yeah, we've got our starting point, our ending point, the general term, not so? So we've got a sigma here. How many terms are here? We don't know. So what does that mean to say? I must go calculate. Not so? So let's calculate quickly. That is Tn. Tn is negative 70. So if I now substitute 5 wherever we see T, 5 minus 3, 8 minus 2 times 5. So it's going to be 10, 6, 2, and this is negative 2. Not so. So what's my A value? 4. And my D value? Negative 4. Not so. So what do I do is? Um, I then say Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. Your A, your Tn. Is negative 70 is equal to 4 plus uh, n minus 1 times negative 4. So that's negative 4 n, that's positive 4, 8. Take it over, so it's negative 78. Yes? Sorry? A is 6. My mistake. Okay, so 6 plus 4 is 10. No? Let's go again. So that is going to give you 10. Take 10 over is negative 80. Is that correct? Right, so n is 20. So what does that mean to say? There are 20 terms in the C. Not so. Give it to her, she's sleeping. She's, she, she's making up uh, the time for, for this afternoon. Right, so n is 20. Not so. Now what? Now, do we have enough information to write this in sigma notation? Yes. So that is going to go under here, no? So we got sigma. What's our starting point? We always start where n is equal to 1. We have a choice where we start. My apologies for the interruption. So, so then, how many terms are here? 20. Tim Pope and Rizma April, can you please report? And the general term here is? That so can is equal to 6 plus n minus 1 times negative 4. So they give you negative 4 n plus 10. So the, the, the general term is going to be negative 4 n plus 10. Now do you guys understand? I think the electric will be going out soon. So let's just uh, wrap up 3.3. Okay, there's a 3.4 on the sum as well for 6 marks. So we're going to stop at this point. Later on we will just wrap up the last part of this lesson. And then we will, this afternoon we will wrap up the last part of this lesson. Okay. Well, this paper, sorry. Alright, so you guys can pack up, Salon. I'll give you another paper as well for Monday. Did I give you another paper already? Huh?